Welcome back to the Carolina Justice Report. Today we debut our season three. We're really excited to get right into it. Today we are talking about the Murdoch murders. I know you guys have been waiting for this. Stay with us. So I am joined with attorneys Sade Crawford, Amy Lawrence, and Sarah Austin. How are we doing, ladies? Good. Good? Good? Yeah. I know y'all are chomping at the bit to get going with this. <laughs> uh -huh. So the last time we talked, which was felt like forever ago, but it was kind of the trial had We're not waiting. started yet, right? Yeah, it was right. just about to start. Um, so now it has started. We're right in the middle of it. We're four weeks <laughs> in. We just started week four. Right. So... There's so much to say. What? Where should we start? How do you think it's going so far? Okay, so we're four weeks in. Um, we, it, I, the lawyer has been bad, right? Uh, the defense and the prosecution has been lackluster. As a matter of fact, when my friends say, "Is this like that?" Are non-lawyers? They say, Have they, "Is this what like a?" You said that too. This is this what I is said? Is this yeah. what like a trial is like? And I'm like, "No, not normally. We have a story. We have a theme. We know what's happening. Yeah. We know why we're being told this information. It comes clear." And in this case, we heard opening statements that were rambling, mm -hmm. right? Um, that didn't give us like a, normally in an opening statement, we're seeing like a roadmap of mm -hmm. what we're gonna see in evidence and testimony we expect to hear, that kind of stuff, evidence that's gonna be presented um, and a story and a theme of what happened, right? Yeah. And we didn't hear any of that stuff. We heard a lot of rambling on right. both parts, on the defense as well. Um, matter of fact, we always joke, we're like, if I were defending this case, it would have been a five minute closing, mm -hmm. I mean opening. And our, the opening would be is, you're gonna hear a lot of testimony about a lot of things, but you're not gonna hear any testimony or evidence about the murder, right? Mm -hmm. And to believe that Alex Murdoch would blow, because that was his whole thing with Dick Hapulian, that he would blow his kid's head off is obscene for a continuance, right? For a courthouse continuance, that's crazy. It makes no sense, and then you just sit down. That's, that's the way it should have done, but instead we saw, you know, Mr. Hapulian get up and ramble for 30, 40 minutes, and I was confused by the whole thing. I'm, 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 as you said, I'm one of the ones that, I don't know how, how a trial is supposed to go. This you, is my first right. experience. Do you feel like you know anything I'm more? I'm so confused and I feel for the jury. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, the jury has mm -hmm. got to be lost right now because watching mm -hmm. this, it's like all over the place. I mean, I don't know, but I don't have anything to compare it to. So I'm like, is this normal? Are you know, all these objections normal? Are all these things normal? And then we're also getting the live stream. We're getting the testimony that's not played before the jury right and so there's some testimony that we're hearing that the jury's not hearing and so I don't I don't know how they're making sense of that because they're just being kicked out you know yeah. and then we're getting Back all this other forth. information and so they don't even have everything that we have to put it all together yeah my mom my mom said it feels like a lot of smoke and mirrors yeah. and I said what do you mean mom because I, I think I know exactly what she means but I want to hear her take on it she said well i think i know i think he should absolutely be convicted of stealing people's money right but i don't think i haven't heard anything that makes me feel like he killed his family yeah mm -hmm. and I that's that's that. exactly where i'm yeah. at right we mm -hmm. and the thing is is when we see a prosecution it's like smoke and mirrors you know a bit the old bait and switch because th that's what it feels like because that's what we're seeing when you take and spend almost three weeks of a four-week trial um, convincing everybody, you know, we're hearing testimony from the, all these civil attorneys like Mark Tinsley. I mean, it was great. It was chef's kiss when it comes to like entertainment. But like, why do we have a civil attorney explaining discovery processes and interrogatories and stuff like that in a criminal trial? It didn't have its place there. And I think they could have absolutely told a full depiction of the story, right? Mm -hmm. That he was stealing these people's money without putting every witness on, yeah. right? We didn't need to hear from Eric Bland. We didn't need to hear from uh, Miss Satterfield's son. We didn't need, you know, Mark Tinsley could have filled that void very quickly mm -hmm. and concisely to explain and give a full picture of everything without having to put up every victim and every attorney. Yeah. No demand. I almost convinces. feel like they were so excited, the prosecution, to that get the financial stuff in that they said, now we have to show them everything. And as far as, you know, I've never been a prosecutor, but you going to trial, you're, you're telling a story, you really have to pick which witnesses tell your story and take out the fluff, right? Because the more stuff you put in there, right. 
the more room for reasonable doubt that you give the defense to find. So if they want to put all that stuff up in there, then we could just pick apart all that stuff. Sure, the defense attorney in me, though, <laughs> is that um, the prosecution isn't always that wonderful, right? And yeah. when we're trying to set up this story, right? We're, right, we're setting up this story of defense, and we think about, because as a lawyer, you're taught to think both sides of the coin, Right. you would say, yes, let me be clear and concise. I don't need 10 witnesses to say the same thing over and right. over. But the reality of it is, is if you've tried a case, you know good and well that the prosecution or the other side loads it up. Oh, no, they're going to do it. And I think they got excited. What is confusing the issue? Yeah. Well, exactly. that's what they're hoping. Okay, that's yeah. what, we're, what we're putting forward is all of this information about financial crimes and, and character evidence, mm -hmm. which so you were just so evidence. lucky to get in because... <laughs> you know, if you know anything about trying cases, which, you know, the common man does not, is that stuff is, we try very hard to keep out that. Why? Because it confuses the jury. And the mm -hmm. point is not for the jury to be confused, but that they are given enough information for the prosecution to do what they're required to do, which is meet their burden, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They gotta meet their burden. And because of all this extra stuff, which you're seeing yeah. is all this character evidence and all this information about financial crimes, you're in here wondering, well, well what about DNA? Well, what about the gun? What well, about fingerprint? Yeah. Right. I just think the prosecution, they got so excited to get it in, they put yeah. it all in. And then I don't see the defense really just being very succinct about, like you were saying, what does this have to do with the murder? Yes. Right. Because instead of playing into it and asking all those questions, questions about the financial crimes, that's not what you're here to do. And make them look silly make for it. Make them look it. stupid for and it. And yeah. that's not happening. I feel like everyone is very Cross-examination of every one of those witnesses should have been. And do you have any information or evidence on the murder that we're here for today? <laughs> And the answer would be no. Thank you. <laughs> that should be it. Thank you. That should be the They're only not even question. asking that question at all. Right. Let alone are... on that night. Do you have any personal information about it? <laughs> Do you Did have he ever tell you anything about, about it? it? Okay. We can see. No. Okay. We can see yeah. he is a lying piece of shit who stole people's money. Right. That should be that. He should. That should be in their opening and statement. That's a but he didn't case, blow right? his kid's head off. He's a lying piece of shit so who stole this, people's money yeah. and didn't blow his kid's head off. I can't imagine that this testimony is helping those crimes later, but. Well, like the, the problem the trial is of those crimes later, because now we have all these under oath statements. But. When you have all these witnesses saying like these, like he's a lying piece of shit who stole people's money, right? Mm -hmm. It makes you lose credibility when it goes on for three weeks, right? Because that's a, this is a very long trial. This, yes. this, I think this trial could have been done in two weeks, start to finish, if they would well, have when been. When is it supposed to be done? With evidence, oh, they have probably four days. It, maybe, right? I know, right? <laughs> about the actual murder? No, absolutely. Like, about murder. I mean, one day opening, one day closing. Right. Two days of right. guns that weren't the murder weapon. Right, and like we're seeing, like <laughs> we're seeing, like. We're, this and the cross examination is sucky. So, like, yeah. with the ballistics expert, essentially, yeah. what we've learned about ballistics is we can't say that any of any of these <laughs> are the same bullets, right? That came from the same bullets. We can only say that this cartridge that was taken from the dog kennels, right? This cartridge was expelled at, at the dog kennels. We can't say that's what killed Maggie or Paul. We know it didn't kill Paul. We can't say it killed Maggie. But, and we didn't take it into evidence till three months after the murder, right? So we went back and like found some casings around the dog kennel that that was, that cartridge was expelled from the same gun that this cartridge near the house in a flower bed was expelled from. Okay, well, it's a hunt lodge. There's fucking bullets everywhere. Sorry, I'm getting very, I should be cursed. <laughs> And all like, like all riled up, Please. but like yeah, beat me out. But like that's that. I mean, and this is the deal. It's not that I, I don't know if Alec Murdoch. I don't think he did, according to all this evidence that I've seen. But like, if we're going to bring charges of murder against anyone. I want to know that they really did it. And I want a prosecutor who really knows what happened and is and has conviction in that, right? Mm -hmm. That gets up and tells the story, this is what happened and, and this is why we think it happened and this is what the evidence will prove. That's what we should expect on every case that's ever brought, right, by a prosecutor. And we're not seeing that here. And that's the part that makes me upset. Like, it's this rush for judgment because we couldn't find anything else. So we're just going to, like, you know, take all these pieces of things and, like, kind of throw it together and hopefully something will stick. And I just don't, I think that everybody... South Carolinians deserve better, right? When life gets ugly, justice is lovely. The love